Today we're going to look at a few cameras I've purchased recently. And uh, we're gonna talk about where I go to find cameras. And first, if you're just getting started in film photography, one thing you should do is tell your friends and family you're interested in film photography. Chances are someone's gonna give you a camera. And because I talk about it all the time on my personal social media and not just this YouTube page, uh, people end up giving me cameras. So here's one that a friend of ours, Margaret, gave me. And uh, it's a pretty simple point and shoot Kodak camera. Got a little barn door, shutter release, winder, film advance. It's got a pretty simple built in flash, nice and clean. I will use this one. And some of the cameras I buy, I'll, I may never actually get to use just because they are, well, like this one here. This is a Kodak Instamatic, it takes 110 film. Let me just show you the back of that one real quick. This one has, uh, the negative is so small, it doesn't make great photographs at all, but it was a very common camera. And there are a lot of people still shooting with this. Another problem with this is buying and then developing the, the film. It, it's still out there. There are people who do it. It's just not as common as uh, 35 millimeter, which is mostly what I buy and shoot with. Here's one I came across. Uh, it doesn't require any batteries. There's not a lot to it. Not a lot of controls. You got a little tiny barn door to protect your lens. Point and shoot. Uh, it was totally clean on the inside. You cannot control anything with it, like your shutter, your aperture, your film speed, or anything else. But I've used cameras like this before. I usually use them outdoors and, you know, in full sunlight. And that's where I get the best results for cameras like this one. This one has a bit of a problem with this battery compartment. I have batteries in it now. Let's see if I can open this without having everything go. It's not connecting. Uh, so yeah, you can see the uh, battery compartment door. It's uh, had a little corrosion on it. Cleaned it up a little bit. It looks like I need to clean it again if I'm going to try and use this one. But again, I may not get to this one. And that's what, one of the things I wanted to talk about with purchasing cameras. Uh, one place I go to is Facebook. And sometimes you're going to find somebody selling all their cameras all at once. And there may be broken cameras and maybe good cameras and usually they're not asking for a lot of money but in this case I think I got this one and four other cameras so five cameras for $15 obviously this one's not going to work too well with that battery compartment being like it is so but the other cameras were great again another bag of cameras for 10 or 15 bucks it was uh, in good shape. It just needed a new battery. Anyway, this one was in good shape. The person who gave it to me gave it to me with film in it. So <laughs> I have their film in it. It's probably expired and out of date. But I'm going to use it, and if I can remember how many shots I got out of it, I will get it processed. Another place I find uh, cameras is thrift stores. And you'll find cameras like the ones I just showed you, the, the 110s and the plastic 35 millimeters. And every once in a while, a really nice uh, 35 millimeter will come around. This one was in great shape. Uh, I'll definitely be using this one. It did not have a lot of cosmetic flaws. There's some discoloration in here a little bit, some scratches here. It's got a automatic mode. Had to go out of my way to find batteries for it. But we got that and we'll be definitely be making a video for that camera in the future. Uh, another thrift store find is this Minolta. And this one was nice, clean condition. 
still need to do some cleaning up on it. Uh, it also had film in it already, so <laughs> I guess someone else is film in it. It's got some weird functions on over here in this dial. So I haven't quite spent enough time with it to get used to this. But it fired right up once I put a new battery in it. No problem. And one last camera to look at briefly. I probably will not be using this one. But again, it came with a group of cameras. And I probably won't be using it because of the, the format itself. It's a disc camera. Um, these things were... It, it took a round cartridge of film that fit in here. And as you can see from the opening here that the negative is really, really small. So. Again, kind of like the 110 camera that we looked at earlier. Uh, this guy. Uh, in fact, this negative size is smaller than the 110. So these are not great photos for enlarging. Developing is probably going to be difficult. There's, I'm sure somebody out there is processing these. Um, and as far as stock of film, you probably have to go find old stock. I don't think Kodak is manufacturing film for these cameras anymore. That's my spring camera haul. If you see something that you'd like me to get to sooner than later, let me know. Um, I'll put it to the front of the line. So it'll take some time to get through these. Like I said, I'm probably not going to do these two at all. Um, two of these already had somebody else's film in it, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do with their, their film. And then, you know, some of these other ones are no-brainers, especially this guy right here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.